Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing well. Today what we'll do is we'll take a look at setting up a different type of smart light, something that you'll use um, or you may or may not use depending on how you use your house. But it's going to be this thing right here. I will have all the information listed below. So what we are going to do is we're going to set this up as a bedside light meaning that it's just an indicator of the current status of all the sensors um, in the house. But with that said, um, we'll dig deeper into it. So let's quickly go ahead and take a look. Okay, so a bit of a different view this time. Um, I just want to show you exactly what this is. So it's just a 3D printed box. Um, I'll have the um, files down below on Thingiverse that you can print. And they just fit together, so it's three pieces that you print and then you just connect all the electronics in there so what we'll need is we'll need the base that was printed so all these three pieces now i'm not sure if you're still going to get these but i'll have a link if i find them um that'll fit exactly into these holes because i designed this to fit these specific buttons but i'm sure these are still very popular and available then with that we're also going to need a we're also going to need a esp so right here and that's just going to mount in with screws right there and I'm just going to use these two that I have laying around and then obviously some uh, DuPont connections right here and the last one is the LED that we're going to use now this one is a bit different um, it's just a piece of cardboard literally that I used and then just feed it through the cables from the uh, digital LED strip so I have four LEDs on here and I just connected them right here so they move this way um, I added some um, aluminum foil not sure if that'll make a difference but um, the reason for adding this in there is so that the light doesn't go through the bottom of the box so um, basically it's fitting right inside here and then it doesn't allow the light to go through to the bottom of the box itself but with that said, I'm going to go ahead, go in and quickly set this up and connect everything up and we'll take a look after that. Then one more thing um, right here um, with these buttons. So normally how it would work is a button has, um, the way we're setting it up is like almost like a door sensor basically. So the way it works is one of these uh, terminals is going to be a ground pin and then the rest of them is going to be a gpio pin on the esp so all we're going to do is we're going to use a piece of wire that doesn't have any isolation in it and we'll just push that through to all of them meaning that we're linking all of these buttons um, for the ground wire instead of having one wire going to each of them we just use one that goes through all of them and then just link the end up to the ESP itself. And see guys, all I did right here was I made a connection with that open wire um, through all of the ground connections and then just bring out one ground wire that goes directly to the ESP or node MCU. And then the same with the additional wires. Um, all I did was I just connected these points to a DuPont connection. I just used a male to female one as the female one can be uh, strapped down with the headers right here. Now what we need to do is we need to go in and um, put the wires through the hole right here and then uh, connect everything up. So that's connected in. It is quite a tight fit, guys. So just keep that in mind. Um, it is quite a tight fit, but once you get everything in there, uh, you should be good to go. So let's quickly move on. Um, I think the next part would be for us to connect everything to the ESP. But before we do that, um, as you can see, the way it sits in here is um, it's facing uh, up with the um, connectors facing down. So we need to program the ESP before we connect everything else up. 
Okay, so back in Home Assistant, it may look a bit different. Um, nothing has really changed. Um, all I did was I just used a different theme. Um, I do have a video showing you how to use custom themes, themes from Hacks. This is the Dark iOS one, I think. Um, it's really cool. Uh, so I'm sticking with this for now. With the setup that we're going to use, all we'll do is we'll set up a ESP Home, um, an additional item in ESP Home. So it's fairly similar. All the items that we're going to use, we have set up previously. So it's fairly simple. If I click on ESP Home, we can, um, as you can see, I already created one right here. If I edit this, I'll just show you exactly what's in here. So we have um, all the basic information setting this up. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I have a few videos regarding ESP Home as well that explains exactly how to set this up. But all I did was with this specific one is I literally copied the information I already have on a different, um, on my different sensors, the one that's, ones that we set up in the previous videos. So it's fairly simple, there's three buttons. So it's just a binary sensor and I'm, and I'm connecting it to D1, D5, D6. Those are the three buttons. So I need to connect those yellow cables to pin D1, D5 and D6. Then with the um, LED, those are those WS2812 um, Bs. Those are the ones that I got um, that was a bit longer um, than I needed. So I just cut those off and I shortened the existing one that I had. And then I'm connecting that to pin D7. The power for the LEDs is going to come directly from the VIN pin on the ESP. So VIN, ground and pin D7 for the data on my LED strip. That's basically it. So I just added these binary sensors and then the light in here. So that's it for the code. You'll need to upload this before and just make sure everything is working um, before cramming everything in that little small box um, because the header is facing downwards. You need to test this just before putting everything in and you, you realize something's not working and you need to take everything apart again. There we go. So we're back in here real quick. So all I'm going to do is, as you can see, my pins, I've already um, set this up previously. So my pins are already bent. Um, but that's basically what we're going to do is we're going to connect up the LEDs as well as the buttons that we have for this uh, connection. So let me go in and quickly connect these up. There we go. So the buttons has been connected up. I'm just pushing them through here um, just to keep them in place. For now, I still need to connect the LED. So as you can see from my LED, I have these wires. The blue one I connected up to the data pin listed on here. So DIN uh, right there is for data. Then I have the red one for the power. And then the brown one is obviously the ground wire. See? This is just a piece of cardboard with some isolation tape and then um, aluminum foil at the top. And there we go. So that's connected up. All you can see are just routed the cables to come out the back right here. So everything's connected up. I have the LED. So all we do with this one is we just slide it on evenly or as even as we could possibly get it right here. And then once we have that in here, as you can see, it's not really that even. So you can adjust that. Um, that's why I made an additional hole right here just for me to be able to adjust it a bit more to get it a bit more even to spread the lights a bit even. But first we need to test it. So all I'll do is I'll just pop this right on here and then we can take a look at testing it real quick. So it looks like everything is working. I just plugged it in, um, tested it, added it to my home assistant. And as you can see, it is changing colors. Let's see if I can dim the light real quick. Um, that may help a bit to, so you can see a bit more clear, but as you can see, it is working like it should. So I think I can go ahead and set up some automations with it. Okay, so back in here, 
I just want to show you guys that everything is working like it should if we click on show logs right here if I press these buttons um, we'll just wait for the output to start but as you can see the light is on so if I press these buttons one two and three so mine is a different direction but as you can see they are working everything is functioning like it should so the buttons are working the RGB light is working as well so if I go back in here real quick and let's just open this up and if I change it to a different color as you can see it is changing the colors now obviously this is not very bright and it's not really going to help a lot for lighting but the reason that I set this up is to have something next to your bed. So what I'm going to do is we'll set it up like, say for example, one door is open or a window is open. This light would be red. So like it is right now, its state would be red. However, as soon as any of, as soon as all of them are closed, the light would be blue. And this is more of a convenience thing. So this is more of a convenience thing. So say for example, you would like to go to bed, you climb in bed and you realize uh, maybe some windows are open or a door may be open. Um, then you'll have an indicator showing you. So without the need of opening up the Home Assistant app or anything, the light would already be there showing you the state. And then the buttons, while well, the buttons is just for additional convenience, so you can press a button, you can set these up to do any automations you'd like. On mine, I set one to turn off the actual light, this box itself, because it may be irritating looking at it at night. So one button turns it off, then one to turn off all the lights in the whole house, which is very convenient as well. So when you get to bed, just press the button, all the lights will turn off, or you can do an automation that does a bunch of things. So those are all fairly sim sim simple to set up as well. But the main thing we're going to take a look at is setting up the automation for the actual light. So first things first, we need to go into our configuration right here, then click on the automations, create a new one right here. So just click the plus sign behind my camera. We'll skip this right there. It's going to ask us to give it a name. I'm not going to give it a name right now. I already have the setup. So right here is going to ask us to add in a name. I'm not going to add a name right now. I already created these automations previously. So for the triggers. So the thing about this is we need to add every single sensor that we have in our house. So all of our binary state, binary center sensors when the state changes. So we need to select like um, all the windows. So if we do door, so kitchen door, and then if it's from on, to off and then we add another trigger for each and every sensor that we have so again the exact same state entity it'll be a window so kitchen window one from on to off So once you've added all of your sensors in there, so all of the statuses, mine is on, off means that everything is closed. So what happens now is each one of these would trigger this unless we add in a condition. So we don't want the system to trigger if say one of these are still on. We need all of them to be with the closed status or off in this case, all of them needs to be off before this needs to trigger. And the way it's currently set up, so up until this point, if any of them changes the status to off, it's going to trigger events unless we add in some conditions in here. So right here in the conditions, we're going to use a AND condition. And then all we do is we add in the exact same uh, the exact same information that we added in above here. So all of our sensors. So we know that, so all of them needs to be with the state of off. So exactly the same, we run through, add in all the sensors again with the and condition as well. There we go. So I just use the existing automation that I have in instead of adding everything in here. So 
as you can see, I just called it light safe. You can call it whatever you want. It's just an automation. And then we have these states. So we have all of our all of our window and door sensors listed here with the state of on to off, meaning that as they, once all of them or as soon as one of them close, it needs to check these states. So um, we have a and condition in here. So all of these needs to be in the state of off. So if it's not, so if one of the windows are open, it will not trigger this automation. That's why I have all of the existing ones in here. As you can see, I just added in and, 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 and added in all of the sensors that I have that all need to be in the states of off. And then in our actions, we do a call service, turn the lights on. Then I select the bed light LED. That's what I called this little thing right here. And then I said the brightness to maximum brightness and then the color to blue. So it's fairly simple, just brightness, colon, uh, how bright you'd like to have it, 255 is max, color underscore name, colon, and the blue color. So this one is called light safe, meaning that everything is closed. Now I have an additional one in here that is called light unsafe. So if I edit this one right here, it's basically a duplicate of the exact same information that we just did. The only difference is it's in reversed order. So instead of from on to off, it's from off to on. So it's exactly the same. The only difference is I just changed the uh, conditions from off to on instead. This means that as soon as one of the windows opens, it's going to change this light to red. So if I um, remove this, it's going to change this light to red. There we go. And then if I close it back again, it would go back to blue. And that's it. Extremely simple to set up for something that could save you a lot of time after climbing into bed and not and wondering if you have closed or not closed the window. So the next step is setting up the automations for the buttons. Now these are ex extremely simple um, to set up. I did cover setting up buttons in a previous one with the alarm one. So you can take a look at that. I can show you exactly what I have in here. So I have bed light three, two, and one. That's just the name of the automations right here. So if I click on edit right here, it's just telling us that um, if I press the button one on the actual device, so right here you state the binary setting button three from on to off. And that's just when you press it, it's exactly the same as the door sensor. So it's just a contact. As soon as it makes contacts, it, it'll trigger it. So from on to off call service, turn lights off, and obviously it's going to turn off this thing right here. So if I press the button, um, that one turns it on, this one is turns it off. So this one I set up to turn on it and set the color to white. The middle one turns off all of the lights in the whole house. And then the first button, that's just, so if you go to bed, you acknowledge that everything is good because as soon as you open up one of these again, it's going to turn this light back on again. And then to acknowledge it, all we do is we just press this button and it'll turn it off. Okay, so just one more time to show you guys exactly how this functions. Um, if you copy my um, automation, the way I set it up, it would work exactly the same. So I have two of these sensors right here. So as you can see, as soon as I open one of them, it'll change the status of that light to red. Now this camera doesn't show red, it seems, but it changed that status to red. And then as soon as I close this back again, it'll change the status back to blue right there. Same with this one. If you remove it, it changes the status to red. Even if I remove this one and then I close it again, it won't change the status back to blue because of we have that and in there, meaning that all of the statuses need to be exactly the same before it's triggering this result. So we need to close all of them before it'll turn back to blue. And then to acknowledge it, we just press the button number one here and it turns off the light. To turn it on, we press this one. That's the automation that was set up. And then to turn off all the lights, I set it up to this button. 
So there we go, guys. Um, fairly quick video or fairly simple to set up. Um, uh, I wasn't planning on doing anything like this, but I was stuck and I needed to get something out for you guys. So that's a fairly simple autom automation that could save you a lot of time if you are one of those people that constantly check if everything is closed. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any smart lock, so I don't have the status of the actual door to make sure that it is locked itself. But um, it's fairly simple to set that up if you had that connected to your home assistant as well. You just add them in as an additional state. So if you guys do get stuck or you have any questions, you can go in and um, ask down below. I'd be happy to answer them or there may be a different way or an easier way of setting it up. This is just the only way I, I set it up and it's working for me. As I've said, with home automations, there's a bunch of different ways you can set up and customize automations to fit your needs. And there may be easier ways or harder ways of setting it up. It just depends. So with that said, I'm going to leave you guys. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.